Killing lawyers is not a competitive advantage. The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Henry the Sixth, Part Two. You have to love Shakespeare if only for that line. Some say that the line shows that lawyers and the law stand in the way of unruly mobs and conspirators plotting to overthrow governments. And that's why evildoers want to kill lawyers. But good South Africans also complain that lawyers are scumbags that protect the worst in society, murderers, rapists, and politicians. Paradoxically, lawyers are good when they help us screw our spouses over in a divorce, get us off drunk driving charges, and evade tax. We complain that the first victim of xenophobic attacks is the law. I'm shocked that they harm or kill somebody in a xenophobic attack. These people are lawless, we'll SMS to our friends while driving. Somehow, that seems less lawless, less senseless, and more harmless and deathless than xenophobic attacks. But what causes more injury, SMSing or xenophobia? Laws apply to others but not me. This attitude exposes that the law is not a problem, the problem is us, and how we view and relate to it. Some say this stems from the gold rush days when an anything-go attitude prevailed in the lawless mining towns. Add to that apartheid laws that provoked disrespect for law and traditional societies that rejected colonial law. So our attitude is a product of history, but are we prisoners of that history? We may have redefined ourselves as a nation, but refuse to redefine our attitude towards law. Whether our attitude is inherited from the struggle comrades or from gold rush miners or tribal villagers, or all three, it is less interesting than understanding why our attitude ruins our competitiveness. Rather than breaking the law while insisting everybody else is bound by it, many of our European competitors exploit following the law into becoming a competitive advantage. In 1983, South Africa was dealing with racial classification and the invasion of privacy and the processing of personal information that apartheid required. Germany is also familiar with devastating results of unrestrained processing of personal information. Post-war, Germany committed to building a society that would be far away from that sort of history. In 1983, the German Constitutional Court followed up a 1969 federal decision that guaranteed the fundamental right of the individual to decide on the disclosure and use of personal data. The case prevented the sharing of national census data with other government authorities. Not wanting to be a prisoner of their history, Germans decided that privacy, including data privacy, was a law worth having and complying with. German society and companies played by the rules. Now Germany is a world leader in privacy and the IT products and services are differentiated by the adherence to privacy principles. Businesses around the globe are struggling to compete. Yet today in South Africa, individuals and companies show their poor attitude towards the law and don't take the new privacy law seriously. They complain about complying with poppy and trying to avoid it or get around it. That is why so many businesses in South Africa will be playing catch up forever. Businesses that are always looking for ways to get around the rules rather than by playing with them or using them to their advantage will never really be successful in the long run. Winning sports teams play by the rules. They're there for a reason. So while the first thing we may want to do is to kill all the lawyers, perhaps instead we should use them to be more competitive.